In this video, we're going to be discussing lab 5, which is a flame test. This is one of the easiest of the labs, um, and you'll be able to finish this fairly quickly. So, um, the flame test is a good way to determine um, or to identify whether it's an element or it could be a substance, a crystalline salt. Now, salt is a generic term for um, ionic compounds, all right? So, they generally have these crystal structures. Um, and uh, all you have to do is kind of uh, light up that unknown element or the salt, all right? Just apply a solution of it to the flame and you'll get a characteristic color, which is an identifier of that element or that compound, all right? So this is a quick, easy way to determine um, whether in some unknown um, substance, you have a certain element or a compound. For example, table salt has sodium, um, NaCl. So all you have to do is, uh, use this um, solution of sodium chloride, just dip some salt into water. Um, I mean, just dissolve some salt into water and then um, dip a, a thin um, wire um, rod. Um, there's a flame test wire rod. You just dip it into the solution and then apply it to a flame and you would get like an orange yellow color that identifies the presence of sodium, all right? So basically what happens here um, with the flame test is generally the way the electrons are arranged in the atoms are at um, set levels. Or these are called as energy levels. So suppose you have an electron at a certain energy level, the first level or the second level. Um, and that's where it belongs. So that's called its ground state. Suppose this atom was um, given a lot of energy in the form of heat, then an electron in a ground state, it doesn't matter what level um, it is, whether it's the first, second or third, um, can then get all excited with that excess energy and um, electrons being very high energy, um, fast moving. Um, they can move out of their ground state into a higher energy level, but they don't belong at this level, so they're unstable. So what happens is they're there for a temporary amount of time, but eventually they come back to their ground state. And when that happens, all of that extra energy in the form of heat um, that was absorbed is given out in a form of a packet or a photon. Now that photon can, uh, if it uh, has a wavelength that belongs to the visible region of the uh, light spectrum or the electromagnetic spectrum, then uh, we can see it with our naked eye. Suppose that photon um, appears in the infrared or the UV region, then you, we may not be able to see it, all right? So as long as uh, that photon is emitted, comes out in that visible region, we can then um, see a color, all right? So um, this is a rough pictorial or a diagram of how that could happen. You have an electron at its ground state. This is where it belongs. This is, uh, uh, in terms of the nucleus, this would be the first energy level, this would be the second, and then the third energy level. So suppose this has absorbed all that heat and then moved into the third energy level where it doesn't belong. It's unstable and so it quickly comes back down to where it belongs. And when it does so, all of that extra heat that it absorbed, that energy is emitted as a photon and that photon could appear in the visible region and then we'll see a color that is associated with that photon. So, a lot of these elements and compounds have distinct wavelengths that they emit. Um, so there's distinct colors associated with each of those wavelengths. 
and sometimes we can see them but a lot of the times if it occurs in the visible region it is possible to to see with a naked eye all right um a lot of the times what will happen is while you're doing the flame test you have to be to be very aware of contamination for example um, sodium sodium chloride um, is a big contaminant because it's able to get into um, everything and so um, instead of the individual colors that you're supposed to see everything turns out to be that orange yellow flame all right so um, therefore what you need to do is to use clean um, flame test rods um, make sure there's no contamination that there is one flame test rod for each um, sample that you're testing okay so these are some of the um, elements and compounds that you'll be test testing lithium strontium calcium now when you have all these different shades of red it might be hard to see them this is especially hard in um, real life in a physical lab to distinguish between all these different shades because they're so close in terms of color um, magnesium again other bright white may or may not be quite visible um, again when you have different shades of green again that would be hard to distinguish so um potassium on the other hand is very visible because it has that um, lavender the violet color um so that's easy enough to see and as I, as i said sodium has a characteristic orange yellow color So the procedure here is pretty simple. You're going to take a Bunsen burner, turn that on, um, use a clean wire rod um, from the instrument shelf and dip it into the culture tube. The culture tube is kind of like a test tube that contains your sample. So you're going to be testing uh, basically uh, the this listing of elements and compounds just going down the line, all right? Um, since there are unlimited um, uh, flame testing rods you are able to use different ones for each of these um, these uh, these elements and compounds or uh, the culture tubes all right so um, so that you avoid all this contamination etc okay again it's a virtual lab so you may not be battling the issue of contamination so the aim of this um, lab is to identify the different elements and compounds by the characteristic colors they emit during the flame test. So um, what would be my hypothesis here? That it would be hard for me to distinguish between those elements which are, um, have the, almost the same type of color but in uh, different shades so um, for example different shades of red would be harder to distinguish the same goes for those which are all seem to be appearing green but different um, types of green all right so those those subtle differences might be hard to tell and um, materials equipment um, uh, you know what how to write the procedure and these are now in this case observations and results again you can write them as separate sections or combine them into one section that's uh, leave that up to you so as far as the conclusions um pretty much your hypothesis um may could well be supported here uh, especially like me if you have a hard time um distinguishing between all the different um shades of the same color okay um, so uh, how do you apply this um, in real life the best way to apply a flame test 
um, in order to do an element analysis or a compound analysis is to do a more sophisticated version of the flame test called flame atomic absorption um, spectroscopy. So that's a different kind of instrumentation. It's based on the same um, flame test, um, the same kind of principle of flame test. Um, but it's a bit more sophisticated and it's easy then to do an elemental analysis of an unknown, unknown element or compound in a sample. So what did you learn from this? This is an interesting experience, experiment. Some real world uh, applications would be um, like spilling salt when cooking or salt water onto the flame when cooking and you'll suddenly see that uh, flame uh, just lighting up with this orange yellowish glow and that is an indicator that bright yellow is an indicator of the presence of sodium in that salt water. Um, fireworks especially the reds come from the presence of strontium. Okay. Um, it's easy to tell whether copper is in any kind of solution or compound because copper um, has that characteristic color of that um, blue-green type of color that it imparts to the, um, to the flame. It's very pretty color. Now, how could you use this in terms of nursing? All right. Suppose you suspect a patient is suffering from lead poisoning or arsenic poisoning, poisoning or some other um, organic type of compounds which are a very um, uh, like an antifreeze type of compounds, glycolic compounds which are uh, very poisonous and harmful, all right? Um, you could send out that sample, the fluid sample to the hospital lab and they would then do a flame absorption spectroscopy on the sample and do the elemental compound analysis to, to detect the presence of these harmful substances in the sample, right? Um, that's about the only application I can think of in terms of health and nursing. I'm sure you could research this further and find out other uses for flame tests. And that's the end of this video.